parametric architecture takes advantage of uh, computational design. You can work more efficient and faster, and you can achieve more complex things in the same with the same effort that if you would be working in a in a normal digital world. <laughs> AI, AI is really scary to me. In a couple of months, the same software or similar software will make a video uh, going inside of the building and so And in six months more, uh, you will ask the, the AI to have some, to fit the model into the regulation for the city and for gravity and loads and everything. So. So guys, uh, today we have Professor Diego Garcia uh, with us. He's based from Spain and uh, he is master in his field. He is an author, he is a computational designer, he's a professor and uh, we are going to talk a lot about architecture, computational design, studies in Spain and future of architecture, AI and so on. So sir, welcome and thank you so much for accepting the invite. Thanks to you, Sarans, for the invitation. I'm, I'm really happy to, to, to share some knowledge, if possible, with uh, you and your, and your followers. And I, I really appreciate the interest from so far. Now you're established at Canada, so thanks to you, Rick. So it's all my pleasure. And uh, again, um, I would like you to tell our audience something about you so that they get to hear from you uh, what do you do and uh, how did you come to this field and uh, yeah something about you sir. well i studied architecture in a traditional way let's say in here in, in spain and uh, but uh, i started to figure out that there was something missing when I did my final uh, thesis and I was lacking the tools to express the projects that I wanted to do. Then uh, I won a competition, it's a, nat a national competition where uh, it's like a kind of a grant that gives you like a, uh, some money uh, to go to a famous um, practice, architecture practice in the world. And so I choose um, Dominique Perrault, that is a famous architect at Paris. And there, it was the first time that I saw something different. I mean, this type of architecture, it was in the, at the highest level. It was co in competitions with others as uh, Norman Foster, Zaha Hadid, and so on. And obviously the software that they were using there, it was different to what we were accustomed uh, when, uh, at my studies. And there I learned about uh, rhinoceros. And then I started to become super interested in this type of a little more advanced design. I found uh, it was 2008 when I found a master course in biodigital architecture that it was uh, unique almost in the world in Barcelona. And I enrolled directly in that master. I said, this is for me. No? And there, that was super interesting to learn about uh, nature, uh, how nature creates geometry, what are the form-finding principles and self-organization principles under this type of uh, geometry. And also we're combining theory with practice. So we had access to three-axis mini machines, 3D printers, and it was uh, shocking to me somehow. It was like, wow, we need to apply this into architecture now. And so um, then the famous crisis, the financial crisis from 2008, 2009 uh, came and there was no work for anyone. I mean, you could apply to any architectural office or practice and they were saying your CV could be super interesting, but I'm sorry, we're trying to um, remove people from the office because we have no work. And so I was talking with my, with my colleague, Sergio, and he was working at a uh, New York at that time, and he was coming to Spain, and we decided to do something different because to to, to do something like self-employment, no? and we bought like a large uh, size uh, milling machine, three-axis milling machine, and we established a company in Madrid. 
none of us was from Madrid, but we thought that that was like, uh, there were like more opportunities to get job and do things in Madrid than in a smaller city. And it was uh, quite interesting to see how people didn't know that much about the possibilities, but they were starting to engage on that. And then we started to do a lot of workshops and courses on Rhino, parametric design, uh, we started uh, teaching in several universities. It was uh, at that moment it was too much. We were uh, maybe at the same time in four years to quit and select only a couple of them to go on. But um, after that, let's say that uh, we had the opportunity to become experts in this kind of fields. No? Wow! Uh, so you had your own journey, and like something odd made you choose this path. Like for me, for example, uh, COVID, when COVID hit, I started looking for better opportunity. Uh, what should I do next? And then I landed up into BIM. And right now I'm just into BIM industry. But uh, I think so like similar thing happened with you back then when you started exploring other field as well. And then you came up to computational design and architecture, 3D printing and all those stuff. Mm -hmm. They say that crisis is opportunities, yeah. And uh, and I, it was like that at that time because, for example, if there would have not been a, this famous crisis in two thousand and eight, probably you and me were not talking right now. Would be not talking right now because uh, I would be I would have been employed at a good architectural office and I would have been one more person in that office and that's it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> actually, you are hundred percent right. Uh, can you explain us? Because a lot of viewers are very young; they are probably in first or second year of their architecture, or probably just thinking about architecture, like joining architecture. So, what is computational uh, design or parametric architecture? Uh, it's a kind of big uh, explanation, <laughs> but uh, let's yeah. summarize it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let, let, let's focus maybe more in the young students of architecture that already know something, no? Mm -hmm. And so, for example, we could explain uh, computational design first, explaining what it is not. So, for mm -hmm. example, computational design is not CAD. It's not CAD design. CAD is computed at the design. It's just a kind of a digital application that we have used, for example, with AutoCAD or with Rhinoceros or uh, Illustrator or any other software that mm -hmm. allows you to draw in a digital way the same as we would have done in an analog uh, in an analog uh, way, you no know, drawing by hand and so on. So CAD mm -hmm. is not that advanced. It's not computational design. Also, BIM, BIM, building information modeling, is not computational design because it is kind of a simulation of the elements of a building with a lot of data and information, and then but it does not take advantage of the power of computational design. And also uh, digital design is not computational design. Digital design is just designing with a, in, an, in a digital environment. So computational design takes advantage basically of the power of computers. Uh, well, it means uh, processing a lot of data mm -hmm. or working with um, a script scripts with processes where we can repeat as in a loop orders that we should in another way we should do manually so for example if you have to make a facade with 1000 windows and you want all the windows to be different depending on the distance to the door in normal CAD design you have to measure the distance and do the first window measure the distance for the second do the second and in computational design, you have the capability to create an algorithm, a set of rules that say, okay, measure the distance to the window, scale it a certain percentage according to that, and do that for the 1,000 uh, windows that I have. No? And so you can work more efficient and faster, and you can achieve more complex things in the same with the same effort that if you would be working in a in a normal digital way. No? Parametric architecture takes advantage of uh, computational design. Mm. Uh, parametric means that uh, we're working with parameters. 
parameters basically are related with mathematics. A parameter is just a number, or it is uh, the variable of on a, on a function. And so, in architecture, para, a parameter could be the width of a wall, the height of a building. It could be the number of uh, bedrooms that we have in a flat. It could be anything. Every number is a parameter. And so, parametric architecture uh, means that everything is parameterized, and you can change any number in, during the process that everything will be recalculated. That means saving a lot of time because when we're working with just CAD, any software that is just CAD, you do it. And sometimes when you when you arrive to a point yeah. where you realize that it is wrong and you have to go back to the middle of the process, you have to undo, 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 and then you have lost half of your night doing mm -hmm. that. In parametric design, you see the whole process. You have like the history of your algorithm, the algorithm, the, the rules that create your design. And you can come to any parameter at any time that everything will be redone. So we're saving a lot of time. At the same time, we can deal with data. We can get data from an Excel file. We can get data from a web page. We can get data from uh, the flow of pedestrians, uh, and the surroundings of the plot. We can use all that data also to create our building, our geometry, uh, with some concepts as form finding or some self-organization. So, so we can talk about more complex things in general than just without computational design. Wow. So uh, basically, computational design uh, is generating algorithms to make models or 3D object or 3D asset, producing 3D assets by using algorithms. And parametric architecture is taking the help of computational design to generate these models, right? To, into, to, into architecture. architecture. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So computational design can, can just deal with data for many purposes, interactivity or I don't know, whatever. But um, archite parametric architecture uses the computational design to mm. create basically geometry for architecture. Okay. okay. So uh, my next question is, how can we, uh, as like, for example, uh, I'm talking about myself first. I do have some experience uh, into Revit, into a little bit in Grasshopper, Dynamo, and uh, uh, Rhinosaurus as well. But uh, I don't know where to start my journey into if I want to do parametric architecture or computational design. I don't know where one should start. What are the things that we should consider and how we should proceed ahead? Yeah, yeah. Um, I could uh, talk about my experience with uh, Rhino and Grasshopper, that is my field. Mm -hmm. In that case, uh, I would start with something you're interested on. Like, for example, watching tutorials and so on, and then you find a tutorial that uh, makes like a very nice tower that can rotate. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. I'm interested in that. So you try to understand that tutorial, that uh, YouTube video, whatever. Probably you won't understand anything. Yes. And so, or you just copy, but you know why things are happening because it's not that easy. I mean, it's not just like uh, selecting polyline, trim, and working. No, a, you have to enter it a little bit into the into data management. And so, what I would do is to buy, for example, uh, or to go into a good source. That could be going into grasshopper3d.com and download several PDFs that you can download for free. Or even more, I would buy, for example, the book of Arturo Tedeschi, that is mm -hmm. AAD, Algorithmic ID Design. That for me is like the Bible for Grasshopper. It starts from zero, from scratch, then you go page by page, take your time. It's a big book, but I, be sure that after reading half of the book, you will master many 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 things in in parametric design and of course to follow many people because nowadays uh, for me instagram 
is the most advanced tool to, to understand what's going on in the world. Because mm. if you go to the to the specialized magazines and so on, they go a step a step behind. But what Instagram is instant. It's like I yeah. do it, I post it, and then it's like, wow, how do you do that? Now? Or what have yeah. you found? There, how what what is that plugin that you're using? You know, it's a plugin that it was released a couple of weeks ago. So. I, I, I would go for a good source, like uh, this book or any other book, and then uh, researching and following people and contacting people. Many people contact me on Instagram. I always try to, um, to answer everybody. Like, I have a problem with this. Send me the file and I will try to help you if I can. And so, so everybody is available in the end. That, that, that's, that's the magic of this world that you're in Canada, I'm in Spain, another one is in Italy, and the other one is in in India, and we can share immediately knowledge and files and anything. So that, 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 that's, that's, that's the best that's thing, the thing of, of this moment, I guess. Rightly said, sir. Uh, I think so. Uh, what I would like to highlight that one specific point that you said, uh, because sometimes I have, I have done this because I have tried my hands on parametric architecture a little bit. Uh, so as you said, like you just see like some video that is really cool and you say like, I will make this. I followed the entire video. I, I made that model it's model also, like it was properly made and everything was functional. But I had no clue how I did it. What I followed, uh, what was the process and why was I doing what I was doing? why I was linking those parameters to different tabs, I had no clue. <laughs> so it, it made no sense at the end. Like I learned nothing. I just copied. Yeah, yeah. There are there two are types, types of videos. Type of videos that are just to show something very cool that you can do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I do that. It's like, look what I can do and so on. And there are other videos that are just to, to teach something. And so mm. when you're following uh, like something cool that is not prepared for teaching, you do it, but you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but uh, there, are, there are other channels that maybe could have more, uh, a better quality information about learning. No? Also, yeah. for example, we have a company, Controlmat, that mm. uh, we offer courses. And so we are sure that the quality of our courses is going to be good. And we try to compress a lot of knowledge in the minimum amount of time and money according to the time obviously okay. and i think that's also a very uh, important time saving the problem is that you need the money in, to enroll into a course you yeah. want to do it for free probably you will have to go here and there, 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 there and it will take all this time if you if you have no time but you have money you learn the same in less time so it's, it's like that. yeah and is it online this course uh we have different types uh, online live uh, yeah. on, online pre-recorded -pre uh, videos and okay. also we have some that are hybrid like part online and part um, on site for the digital fabrication part okay perfect uh, i'll probably go ahead and uh, mention the link in the bio because a lot of students have been asking me and in fact, even I have been looking for like some courses that I can just go through and like, you know, have a look so that I also have the knowledge. I don't want to go in depth of it because BIM is already too much <laughs> to handle. Uh, so, but I will, I will definitely tag a link. So my next question is about AI, like everywhere I see, either it be LinkedIn, be it Instagram, be it Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, everywhere. It's like, okay, AI is developing this. AI is developing this. Now there is a company named Hyper or something. Uh, they have started um, algorithmic generation of uh, entire models. So for example, I can type in uh, uh, like prompts. I want a building that is three floors. Then I will type in, there should be this many units the area restrictions is this much and um, it generates everything what is ai and is it something like 
if we know computational architecture or parametric architecture would will it be better for us to understand ai or ai is something totally different than what we are talking about right now i uh, know it's a scary <laughs> AI, ai is really scary to me i don't know I, I, it, it's a, it's something that i don't fully understand where is where it is going and what is the end of that yeah. Because we're in the in the beginning no? of something. So it's like, for example, in the internet. I remember yeah. when I was younger, when the internet appeared, I remember to, to listen to a friend saying, I have a friend that has something called internet, and he can enter and research for um, works that are already done. I was like, wow. And look now, internet is everything. No? We use it all the time. So AI uh, probably has a huge future. And then, for example, when I talk to my students or of first or second year, they are really worried about AI. It's like, mm, are we learning something, spending time on something that a software can do with a prompt? It's like, I don't know what to answer to that. I, I always say, mm, well, but the prompt has to be done by an architect that knows what you're asking for, know what you're asking uh, to, to AI. But, uh, I'm, I'm really scared about uh, the future of that and our and, and, and our careers and everything. I don't know if everybody could uh, create a building that works just with a prompt in a couple of years, maybe, maybe. Yeah. So <laughs> it's uh, really something that we cannot foresee, mm -hmm. uh, but we have to be there. We have to be. It's super important for the students to start using ChatGPT and. And Dali and everything on all the tools available to get yeah. accustomed to it because if you don't use them in one year you're not going to understand anything and you will have students by your side that are going to do this much in in the time that you do this without AI so mm. oof, uh, I, I, know I saw the other day the, this app that uh, you just make a rough model and say what you want the model to be and it makes a beautiful render yeah uh, so uh, you know how much time takes to do a render you have to have the idea to do the model in 3d apply materials lights environments then reflections then the lights are not working lights again lose hours 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 computer you need a super computer and now, and it's, now it's not in a few seconds <laughs> yeah like just so, just um, I made, I recently made a reel about D5 high render. Okay. So you might have heard about D5 rendering tool. It is like uh, a So they have launched an AI based uh, rendering platform. So it's called D5 high HI. So you just take a screenshot of any model that you have made and you upload that screenshot to that uh, online server and it generates a render based on your prompts you can control how much you want the ai to alter with your model how much material it can experiment with and how much liberty you want to give the ai if you say like i don't want it to alter the geometry it won't touch your geometry your geometry will be the same and it will produce the render so <laughs> i'm like in, in a couple of months, the same software or similar software will make a video uh, going inside of the building and so And in six months more, uh, you will ask the, the AI to have some, to fit the model into the regulation for the city and for gravity and loads and everything. So in the end, that's not interesting. <laughs> the day, day this happened, I think we will have to look for something else to do. <laughs> the problem is that if the software fails and then you construct the building and it collapses, mm -hmm. who's, who's the fault of uh, you as an architect or the software or the programmer? Because probably when you enter into the, pro the software, they will say that they, they, do not, they don't want to know anything about problems and you have to sign and accept and everything. No? Ooh, so I in the end, we have to, I think we have to, to learn in the end. I think we will yeah. have to learn the architecture and everything. And to AI together. <laughs> and, and, and AI. And AI. Just, just maybe to double check the AI. I don't know. I don't know. But we will have to. have to. 
so uh, coming to the more uh, out of this ai topic um i wanted to ask you as you are based in spain um what do you think uh, is spain a good location for international students have you been seeing a lot of international students coming there to learn uh, probably computational architecture doing their masters of architecture or uh, what is the most trending thing that is going on over there in spain in terms of further or post graduation studies yeah there are many students in in barcelona we have two famous universities iac and university university international of catalonia that they offer uh, master courses in computational design biodigital design and so on and also in madrid uh, they start to the, are starting to, to be some master courses in advanced projects and so on that include a lot of parametric design and as as a, as a small company uh, we have a master course of uh, four months we call it the master course because it's our largest course it's not an official course from an university or something like that but it is just four months uh, focused every single day five hours per day on grasshopper and believe me that uh, we have uh, students from all over uh, all over the world and they learn a lot of uh, parametric design uh, that, that sometimes they use it for example to get the tools to go into another master course in mind that they are interested in uh, landscape design but they want to have this all these tools to go to move into the master of landscape design to apply parametric design to landscape okay is it easy to find jobs over there like no no? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. no, 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 no. Um, the, the two big cities here, Madrid and Barcelona, I think they have uh, a lot of architects, designers, and so on. there are plenty of them. And, and the, the, the jobs are already filled with people. Uh, yeah. After the, the, at the, the, that crisis, 2008, the crisis in Spain was larger. Mm -hmm. It was till 2012, maybe. 2013 and uh, so there is no much work yet yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's it's a very good country for coming to study because mm -hmm. the, i mean as a student it's perfect you have uh, good uh, programs and you have good weather and you can move from spain to every country in europe and so it's perfect for traveling during the weekends and mm -hmm. this big party everywhere and all these kind of things <laughs> Of course, in, super important for a student. Yeah. Uh, but uh, for working is half half. <laughs> in Canada, it is just opposite. It's um, too cold. Too cold. It's no, here, is, here is super good for the weather. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of sometimes regret <laughs> coming to Canada. Like overall, work wise, it's good. Work ethics, work availability is also fine but the climate is super intense so i it's can so and it, it makes a big difference in your life climate yeah yeah because <laughs> it's kind of extreme no the cold sometimes so it doesn't yeah. allow you to make many things i guess no in winters when it's minus 10 we are happy we are happy that it's oh it's minus 10 today okay bye let's go out <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Aye. So my next question is, uh, can we, uh, because computational design and like parametric architecture, there are few major softwares that run into it, like uh, Rhino, Grasshopper, and all these things. But is there a way to integrate BIM with parametric architecture? Can we uh, get parametric model or uh, parametric uh, elements into BIM and can we schedule it? Can we get quantities out of it? Can we uh, basically use it for construction drawings as well? I'm, I'm not sure how it works. So guys, this was end of the part one of this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got to learn a lot from this. 
the part two will be out day after tomorrow after the release of this podcast and if you like this podcast go ahead hit a like and subscribe to my channel so that i can reach out to more people more professors and more experts of this field to give some podcast to share some knowledge with all of you sitting all around the world so please go ahead hit a like and subscribe to my channel i do need your support and uh, yeah this is what keeps me going so i'll see you soon and keep following archive blogs